Hey guys, what's up? I'm Just from Movie Baseball Blogs, and I'm here with Tim from the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. We're gonna hear talk about our favorite team. Well, not our favorite team. Our favorite team to talk about the Chicago White Sox. Tim, what's going on, Brian? Yeah, the, the Phillies are my favorite team. The, the, I like talking about the White Sox. I wouldn't call them my favorite team to talk about, but they're top five, I guess. You would yeah, say. I like talking about the White Sox. I'm a Yankees and an Angels fan, so let's talk about what happened in the beginning of the off season. Um, Paul Cronerico last season when he was in his contract year, and many people were saying that he was going to go sign with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, do you think that with the White Sox, with their requirements, where would and they don't have Paul Cronerico anymore, do you think the team would have had a downward spiral? Well, I mean, they added Adam Dunn, so that's a huge bat, and they, they would have added someone else, so I'm not quite sure. Yeah. They could have added someone like Xavier Nady or, so, or Adam LaRoche or someone like that. Yeah, but he went on to go sign with the Nationals. Um, I've always thought about, since there's a DH role going on in the AL, um, where would you put, would you put Cornerco at DH, or where would you put Adam Dunn at DH? Adam Dunn's going to be DH. Adam Dunn is one of the worst fielders you could possibly find ever. I mean, he tra- he was from the- he was playing outfielder with, like, the Reds, and then... He was a terrible outfielder. Yeah, he, he likes fielding, outfielder. which is why he never went to the AL toll now, but I think he just realized how bad of an outfielder he was. Yeah, he had it from the Reds, he went to the Diamondbacks, and then he- now he's with the White Sox. Um, let's take a little preview of their pitching rotation. At number one, uh, Mark Burley. Um, I really like him. Um, the f- opening day last season, he made that amazing catch underneath his legs. I think he was versus the Cleveland Indians. Um, he said that he would be considering either I think he was in his contract year right now is it his contract year Tim? I think this year might be uh, he said that he wouldn't mind going to another team because that's what I've been reading on the internet about um, he said he wouldn't he would consider going to another team or possibly retiring because he had so much career in uh, Chicago Tim what do you think about if Mark really retires who can he's replace not gonna, him? he's not going to retire he's only like 32 or 3 or so. he's not going to retire I think if he's going to get a big contract there, he's going to have to have a much better season than he had last year. I mean, last year he was 13-13 and 13 with like a 4.3 ERA. He had a bad, bad season for him last season. I mean, he's not a legit ace, and that's the one thing this White Sox team lacks. They have a bunch of number two and number three starters, and they're very deep, but they lack that number one guy. Yeah, I mean... Just to like correct you right there, I just think that Jake Peavy should be the number one star. I mean, Mark Burley. I think, should... I, I think he is, except you never know if he's going to stay healthy. Yeah, and then Jake Peavy's already injured right now. I just if I was to project this pitching rotation, I put Jake Peavy number one, Burley number two, Edwin Jackson number three, Gavin Floyd four, and John Danks at number five. Just to put Danks a little bit down at the number five spot, I think he's a good potential uh, pitcher. I mean, he's pretty beast. Um, I just think that he's going to have a good shot at number five. So Yeah, um, I, I don't think Peavy's going to start the season as ace uh, because I, I don't think, I'm not even sure he's going to start the season not on the DL. All right, yeah, so um, Mark Burley, uh, like you said, he was 13-13 with a 4.28 ERA. Um, he had 210 innings pitched. I think he's going to stay put for right now. Uh, his contract, I think this is his contract year. The White Sox are really going to pursue him to try to resign next next off season. So that's our number two. At number at not number one. At number two guy, we have uh, John Danks. That's just a projected pitcher for the number two spot. Tim, do you think John Danks is the guy who should be number two, or should it be Jake Peavy? It's not going to be Jake Peavy. I I think Jake Peavy will begin the season as like four or five, just because they don't want to put too much pressure on him. Um. Danks went 15-11 with 3.72 ERA last season, so he's one of the options at two. Um, Gavin Floyd could potentially be an option, but he had like a 4.8 ERA, 0.8 ERA last season, so I think uh, Danks is probably a better option. Um, that's really all you. Edwin Jackson is going to be lower down in that rotation, but he's still a pretty good pitcher. Yeah, um, I just have to agree with you on that. John Danks, he's possibly. He's the best. He's really good in this rotation. I really enjoy watching John Danks pitch. I see the White Sox games on WSN a lot. Um, I'm gonna be really, really looking forward to seeing uh, Edwin Jackson every day. Jake Peavy. I hope he's gonna be healthy. 
Um, so that's the number two starter, Gavin Floyd, um, John Danks, I meant. So their number three starter, I mean, it was iffy. I don't really think that Gavin Floyd, since he's the number three starter, is going to be projected in. Um, don't know really much about him. Um, Tim, what do you have on Gavin Floyd? Uh, he started with the Phillies, so I've followed him quite a bit. Um, he had a 10-13 record last season with a 4.08 ERA. He's done much better than that. Um, I would expect him to put some, uh, up numbers somewhere like, you know, 12 and 12 with a uh, 3.95 ERA, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about him, so I can't really say how well he's gonna do, how bad he's gonna do, because I don't really follow that much of Gavin Floyd. I hear about him like a lot, um, but I really think he's gonna be a pretty decent pitcher to come. I'm gonna see what I can see on him this season. Um, their number four pitcher, uh, Jake Peavy, is projected to be number four because right last season I think uh, he injured his arm in a game. I think it was against the Cleveland Indians. And that is just hasn't been really been healed up all the time. Um, projected, he's supposed to be on the DL for about a few games or a few starts. Tim, do you think that's the right path that the White Sox have to go through to get PV healthy? Whatever they have to do to get him healthy, because if Jake PV can be healthy and even at near the level he was at last season, then I don't see any reason why Jake PV or why the White Sox couldn't win the American League or the World Series. Yeah, I mean. Jake Peavy, I really enjoy watching him. My, my dad's, uh, my biological father is uh, a huge Padres fan. I mean, I watch him with the uh, Padres all the time. Really awesome pitcher. Last season, he did pretty decent, I mean, until that injury. Um, he was 7-6. and six. The red win-loss record did not really show his ERA. I mean, it's a mediocre season. Uh, 4.63 ERA in 107 innings pitch. I mean, he really just has to get healthy for the squad. I mean... I actually think they're good. They're going to win their division this season, and they're going to have to. They're going to make the playoffs. Um, they're going to be in the AL championship. It's going to be either White Sox, Red Sox, or White Sox, Yankees, or Red Sox, Yankees. Whatever you guys want to play it that we talked about. I agree with that, and uh, I think the uh, the White Sox will go out at the deadline. Kenny Williams is an aggressive GM, and he'll go after a big name starter if there's one out there, potentially a guy like Felix Hernandez. So. This White Sox team, if they could add someone like that, they are a for sure World Series contender. I mean, if you look over to that lineup now, I mean, lineup's pretty good. Uh, they're going to get Carlos Quinton back at full health this season. I think he's still going to be a star in this league. Uh, Gordon Beckham, I think, had a rough first season. I think he will be a very good second baseman. And um, I'm supposedly Brent Morrell is supposed to be a good pitcher or uh, third baseman. And uh, adding Adam Dunn's huge. Yeah, Adam Dunn is always huge. I mean, he came over from the Arizona, uh, the Washington Nationals last season. Um, he had a pretty great season, but he, uh, his home run, he's a great home run hitter. 38 home runs the past two seasons, uh, 105 RBIs in 09, 103 last season. Um, Adam Dunn is just like their guy right there. He's going to be playing DH. I would actually have Adam Dunn at first base and have Mark Paul Carnerco at DH because Canerco is like pretty much going to at to that age of point where he has to start thinking about if he's going to retire or not. Um, Tim, what do you think about Paul? Do you think Canerco should be at the DH? I I still think that he should. No, I don't think. I think Canerco is a pretty good fielder, and Adam Dunn is. And just to touch on Adam Dunn real quick, um, adding him into this stadium, which is a very hitter friendly ballpark, because as we know in Chicago, the wind blows out. He could hit 45, 50 home runs again. It's not out of the question. I mean, Adam Dunn is one of the best power hitters baseball has ever seen. He's not a great all-around hitter, but he's been one of the most consistent hitters. Um, prior to these last two seasons with 38 home runs, I think he had like four or five seasons where he had hit 40 home runs. So Adam Dunn is quite a power hitter. Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be a great season with Adam Dunn. I think Adam Dunn is like one of is the key acquirement this year, this uh, this team has ever had. Um, their other key acquirement was Jesse Crane coming from the Twins. I think with the Twins this season, um, they're not they're going to finish in third place because they got so many losses in their bullpen. No more John Roush. He went on to be with the Blue Jays as their closer, and then no more Jesse Crane. No more Pat Nish anymore. He just got assigned to the San Diego Padres. Tim, do you think 
What do you think about the Twins just to get off the White Sox right now? I think you'll have to wait and see till we can preview the Twins. Uh, yeah, just to, I don't really agree with you guys. Uh, the Twins are going to be uh, the team that's going to be coming up right after the Braves. That's going to be later on today. Um, to get back to the pitching rotation, we left out the number five pitcher. We got Edwin Jackson. He's coming over from the Arizona Diamondbacks at the trade deadline, I think. Uh, he was traded to the White Sox for Daniel Hudson. Who was the key winner here, Edwin Jackson or was uh, Daniel Hudson the winner? Um, right now, it's the White Sox for getting Edwin Jackson. Down the road, it's probably them for getting Daniel Hudson. I mean, Daniel Hudson was terrific. I mean, I get the Diamondbacks games out here all the time. Um, Daniel Hudson was just beast last season for the Diamondbacks. Um, I actually have him pretty at the number three spot in the Diamondbacks rotation. Uh, Daniel Hudson's going to be a pretty good guy for the White for the Diamondbacks. Um, do you think Edwin Jackson is going to? How long do you think Edwin Jackson is going to be in the White Sox uniform? Do you think he have him going to another team in like years to come? It could, it's possible that he won't be there at the end of the season. Um, a lot. It all depends really on what Jake Peavy is able to do. If this guy can stay healthy and can be that legit ace then the rotation they have now is probably what it's going to be. Um, if it if he can't stay healthy or he's not quite as good as a legit ace, he might be part of a trade. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much what we got for you guys right now. Um, Matt Thornton's their closer in, the bull, in their bullpen. Sergio Santos is going to uh, also be a, a reliever. You got Jesse Crane as the reliever. Their hitting-wise is pretty good. I mean, this team took some big bumps in the road. With their departures, they don't have Freddie Garcia anymore. No more Bobby Jenks. I mean, he was a key guy in their pitching rotation last season. Or not the rotation, the bullpen. Andrew Jones is gone. Mark Cott saves with the Brewers. Scott Lewinbrick is with the Braves. J.J. Putz and the Eagles Manny Ramirez. I mean, that was some big name departures right now. But the White Sox are going to come out on top in this division. I mean, they have everybody. who I think they're going to go on the white right track this season. Their pitching rotation seems pretty hot. If they can just get PV healthy, um, this team will be maybe a 90-game winner this season if PV is healthy by opening day. Tim, what do you, how many wins do you think the White Sox will get this season? Probably about 90, 91, 92, somewhere in that area. Because last season they had 88 win season. And, Tim, I'm projecting them in first. Tim, do you have them in first place? Yep. All right, guys, that's our little prediction on the 2011 outlook for the White Sox. Can the, uh, the key thing is, can Jake PV be healthy by his start, the second day, of uh, the fourth day of the season? I'm Justin. That's Tim from the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. We have the Braves coming up next, and then we have the Minnesota Twins. I'm Justin, and that's Tim. We'll talk to you guys later.